So uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. This is Brent, and I'm your host. We're going to unpack the news this week. We're going to dive into some charts and look at our indicators, what they're telling us in the markets here. Today is um, August 15th, right at halfway through August. Interesting. It's going to be a quiet month, as I've been saying, and we've been going sideways. Uh, originally thought we'd see a push higher in July. Didn't see that. So I think September is going to be when we'll see some, some movement and uh, everything's going to be quiet until then. Uh, anyway, so I'm just pulling up this news here and uh, trying to get the, let's see, this advertisement's in the way. But the big news here is Michael Burry recently and last night came out with news that um, well, he didn't, but they're reporting that he has put on his biggest short since the big housing crisis. Now, he has not always been right. And uh, we will unpack this a little bit uh, tomorrow. But um. Yeah, here's the uh, image of that I wanted to show you. So this is a Twitter post where Michael Burry uh, basically came out and said, or uh, the the tracker, as it were, that uh, he just has put a $1.6 billion short of the markets on the SPY and the QQQ puts. What is he seeing? Well, uh, we don't know. And um, now here's the thing. He's been wrong before. And also he has some. Um, this information is maybe a month old because of the reporting. So he may be in or out of this position or part of it by now. And uh, and so um, that's going to be the big news here and seeing if that comes up here, you know, and if he's right. But uh, let's see, Seeking Alpha, uh, the top stories here in New York Post. I mean, it's essentially... We don't know. And we're going to look at the charts, tell us, see what the charts tell us. That's what we always do. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news and uh, all these ad blockers and uh, trying to find to get an, an article. It's not going to get me, force me to turn off my ad blocker here. It's kind of tricky. So um, let's use a different source here. We've got uh, here's here's the bottom line. Dr. Michael Burry, if you guys have seen the big short, I imagine most of you have where he was right and made a big bet. He made 700 million for his investors, 100 million for himself. And um, but here's some also uh, something that, because he was massively short Tesla last year. And I think that, you know, he uh, may have uh, exited at a profit. Uh, it did, went, did go down a little bit and then it went up. So we just never know when he's in and out. Let's look at the street here. And we can probably unpack this. Uh, did you guys hear this, by the way? So here is a version of the article. Uh, 1.6 billion bet. I don't need to unpack it too much. The markets haven't really reacted. And uh, and here's another version where he made a bad call. This one here I was looking at yesterday. He admits that he was he was wrong to short the market uh, earlier this year. So, you know, I mean, these guys aren't always right. Uh, let's see. Now, the other thing, too, we are discussing in M3 Active Trader is that, uh, you know, um, we don't know what strike prices these uh, options are. So. That's the thing. Is he betting out short term? Is he betting out long term? When they have to report these things, they don't have to bet the strike prices or report that rather. And um, so here's this article saying Big Short Michael Burry admits he made a big mistake here and um, that it isn't the first time he's changed his mind. That would have been, again, as I said, I believe earlier this year that um, I don't want to get into the weeds here, you guys, but he was uh, short earlier this year. And then he said, hey, I was... Uh, um, yeah, earlier this year, he tweeted sell. And what he has the habit of doing is deleting his tweets. So it's kind of up for a minute and then gone. So here we had sell on January 31st. And then he uh, and then people started going higher and uh, he changed his mind. So, you know, um, he sort of back blocked that back. So at any rate, let's uh, I, I do recommend following uh, Michael uh, Burry here on Twitter, by the way. And he goes by Cassandra for some reason, BC, and uh, I'm already following him, but let's see what he's saying here today. 21 hours ago, uh, the tweet's been erased already. Yeah, so I don't know, you know, he puts it up and then he takes it down. And usually it's other people that are saying that, you know, reporting that. So anyway, I think we've covered this. So let's look at our charts here and see what we see. And uh, basically, we're not seeing a whole lot with what the markets are telling us and if i'm going to clean this up a bit i'll just remove all these drawings and uh and see you know we have this long-term trend line on here that's still still holding okay so that's the big thing we're going to watch and uh can our indicators give us any alpha on that uh basically we, we we don't right now because things are so flat and the volatility is so low and the volume is so low 
All right, so we'll jump back to here to the news in a minute, but um, you know, there's not a whole lot to see. Our radar is telling us we're still bullish on the monthly and the three month chart. However, daily and weekly are bearish. So that's exactly why we created this radar so we can have a barometer of you know what is likely to happen in the longer term time frames. So I've been saying for a while now that the weekly and daily we should pull back here. I think we go sideways here for another week and we could dip down a little bit more. We do want to see that this trend line support holds because if it doesn't hold here, we could be in for you know some further downside. That's certainly possible, even down to 21k or 20k where that CME gap is. I'm not saying that we do. And uh, even down to the golden pocket here, there's like 27,300. There's a liquidity pocket right in that range. You know, so, you know, these are, it's, uh, this market can do anything it wants to, as we know. We just, I think it's important that it holds this market structure in this trend line here. And uh, if it doesn't, then we could be languishing down here for a while, come back, retest support, and uh, then go higher. So, you know what, uh, this is one of those, we just don't know. But I do think that we uh, will see some kind of rebound here. Uh, in the near term, I think I think September, you guys, I, you know, that's a wild ass guess, as we say, it's a wag. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hopefully it's more like this from here. and We hold this market structure and we do something more like that. And, and once again, as we've been saying, once we break 32K, I think it's a pretty quick rise up to 48K to 50K range, because as we have also drawn here, that is that Fibonacci golden pocket from the market cycle high, the market cycle low. If we extend that out, it puts us right up into this 49,000, 40, 50,000. I think probably 40. If I really draw that to the best of my uh, sort of ability there, tops to bottoms, it gets us a little closer to 48K. So right at 48K region, I think if we hit that, you know, loves those round numbers, then I think we do push higher to 50K on that uh, sometime by the end of the year. I think that's possible. All right, so let's take a little bit uh, shorter term look here. And uh, again, uh, let's, uh, you know, if you want to go follow Michael Burry, that's big news here. And uh, what else? So we have other news, not a whole lot going on, as I've been saying. Uh, long term Bitcoin holders cash in with profits nearing 100 million. You, you know, um, I was talking to a friend last night who is engineering a large Bitcoin buy and um, basically saying that so that will be done through the miners. And the miners' average cost of mining a Bitcoin right now is around ninety two hundred dollars. So they're in profits, and this is third party information. But um, because they're getting very good at mining Bitcoin cheaper, a lot of it off of the methane uh, byproduct gas from things like oil refining. Senator Loomis is doing that in her state of Wyoming, and so it's kind of lowered the cost, the energy cost of Bitcoin. So the um, the bigger purchases are going to be done kind of on that uh, off exchange, not on the exchanges. But through the miners, uh, that can be done OTC, but also can be done directly with um, large purchases, which won't really affect price so much, but uh, will affect demand, supply and demand. OK, so this is just something to um, kind of park in the back of your mind. And uh, let's see, skimming through this uh, news here, there's not a whole lot else going on here. We have something from... The SEC basically delaying kicking the ball down, uh, the can down the field or the ball down the field and the can down the road on the uh, ETFs, spot ETFs. So basically, they're delaying the decision on the ARK Invest's uh, spot Bitcoin ETF. You know, um, we we have to look, you know, follow the money and realize that, that uh, the first one to get approved will, if any of them, which is very likely they will, will be BlackRock. And, um, you know, so whether or not there's nefarious sort of relationships going on there or uh, greasing the palms of so-and-so, you know, it's likely BlackRock is first. And then these other guys will come back around. And uh, he's definitely an unusual looking guy here, uh, Gensler. But uh, so that's the latest news there, kind of kicking the can down the field. Most people think it'll happen mm, by March of 2024 and uh, not be a big rush. I did find this interesting article, though. Did the NSA create Bitcoin? Uh, we had circulated some... Hmm, some uh, hypothesis around that. And um, there's a former, uh, actually a founder of a stock trading company, a pristine trading had a pretty compelling argument about that at a timeline. You can find it on Twitter if you wanted to look for that. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, Oliver Velez, I believe. Yeah, Oliver Velez, founder of pristine trading has an interesting uh, timeline there. But uh, let me just see here. Some believe that Bitcoin is a work of a bunch of engineers 
in the Chinese Communist Party. But uh, the uh, some are saying that Satoshi is the NSA. I mean, I've been joking that it might be the uh, CIA, but CIA, NSA, same, same. And um, is uh, let's just unpack this a little bit. So let's put on our tin hats for a moment. What makes Bitcoin so secure lies in its use of the secure hash algorithm 256, and uh, which is used for everything, deriving transaction IDs, et cetera, et cetera. But... Um, where is it going with this? Yeah, so well, it happens that this is the direct work of a uh, former NSA uh, mathematician who designed and published it in 2001, and he later became the chief of math research. So, um, yeah, and this is the article we passed around back in 1996. They had, uh, NSA was one of the first to publish an article describing a Bitcoin-like system in a paper titled How to Make a Mint the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash. So if you guys haven't seen that, it's uh, it's out there. It's public information. And um, let's see, there's a couple of here. We'll just click on that first link. Uh, sort of hideous to look at. But yeah, this was 1996. This is the one I've seen. And it was put out uh, by this law firm. And um uh, with in conjunction with uh, some loosely with, with the CA, I have to f follow through on that. But this has out been out there, and um, since 1996, so that would certainly uh, indicate that uh, maybe they had some hand their hand in it. All right, where were we? I've got to jump back over here. We've got some other news with uh, Sam Bankman-Fried also going to jail. So uh, where were we? I want to go back to that. I lost my spot here. SEC? No, this one. Yeah, this one here. So what do you guys think about that? I uh, have some chat over here. I'll move this where I can see this. And let's see, KS says one thing for certain is that Michael Burry's name is well recognized. And uh, so would faithfully generate clicks and tracked eyeballs. Yeah, so there's clickbait, um, uh, certainly. That, um, But, you, you know, he's selective in his, his, um, his recommendations and comments, and then he always deletes it, even though it's kind of pointless. People always retweet that. But uh, but anyway, we'll attract eyeballs. And, you know, look, these guys, I mean, what's his name? Who's being called the new Warren Buffett um, uh, Acker, who um, Bill Ackman, rather, who went on TV in the early parts of COVID. And uh, without divulging, he was short the market and started saying, hell is coming. This is really bad. And he crashed. He helped crash the market. Meanwhile, he made a billion dollars uh, being short. So kind of makes you wonder, these guys, um, you know, there's certainly incentive to come in there and, and help push market in the direction that they want to for financial reasons. Because currently it's not illegal. It should be. It should be like likened to insider trading. These, these high influential or highly influential traders, if they can move the market, they should be, they should be required to divulge their positions. You know, not just CNBC analysts, but the guests. So keep that in mind next time you see Bill Ackman coming in here and saying hell is coming. Uh, you know, likely he's short, or if he's painting a rosy picture, he's buying buying the market. So Michael Burry, maybe the same. Uh, KS says we can look at the charts of DXY QQQ to see if there's anything technical there a month ago to potentially corroborate. Yeah, that's a good idea. KS, we'll do that. And also uh, the miners wisened up and semi diversifying the GPU for AI and other compute data centric as a service offering. So that's interesting as well. Uh, certainly, um, you know, and with NVIDIA announcing their new chip, the um, where they can essentially mine Bitcoin faster, their new GPU, which uh, they developed mostly for gaming, is high energy and um, computationally focused and um, uh, highly capable chips, the GPUs, the gaming processing unit, the, you know, now they're saying, you know, the, the Intel CPU is obsolete. That's why NVIDIA stock has been on a tear because they are uh, innovating at a much faster rate. Well, this, um, you know, if these data miners, Bitcoin miners start saying, I can make more money doing things with the uh, data. So you're saying, I haven't heard this data center as a service. So DAS, I guess, actually, I have heard that before, um, more of database as a service. So, um, Anyway, uh, you might see some miners selling. Maybe we'll pull up a hash ribbon indicator, see what's going on there. All right. So if you guys want to look this up, um, this uh, just before we take our, our tin hat off, yeah, Sashi, uh, so, sorry, Satoshi Nakamoto is code for the CAA question mark. And um, so 
they uh the, yeah here some of them think it was the cia right so uh pseudonymous creator satoshi nakamoto can be interpreted to the u.s spy agency nakamoto loosely translated to japanese means central interesting ah isn't that interesting i have not heard that before so that nakamoto loosely translated translated from japanese means central while the name satoshi means intelligent hmm that's cool well you know what um that's very interesting and uh, if you know Tom Balu had an, an interview with uh, Raul Paul recently uh, where he believes that Bitcoin could be the result of NSA and the UK government uh, experimenting with potential ways to get out future potential financial disasters. Huh. Uh, that's interesting. So um, you guys can go look at that. We want to jump back to the charts and just kind of see what are we seeing. And we're, of course, we're not seeing much. Uh, so. Why don't we do this? I'll go back to an object tree here and we'll just kind of hide some of this and put that in a folder called Fibonacci's. So we can refer back to it and I'll put that one in there. That way we can turn these off and back on. If you're not using the uh, object tree, it's a uh, it's a good uh, tool here. So this one, what you have to do is select the uh, indicator first and then you go up and make a um, folder and then you can rename that. So drawings there so we have curve we got a brush i'll move that up to the top here it's a good way to keep your charts clean and what's your one is this one that's this brush up there and that way we can turn all that stuff off and just look at you know the charts here and, and look there's not a lot going on here kind of a boring class i'm going to try to keep it interesting the markets are not showing us a whole lot uh we uh, certainly can go over and look at some of the uh, overall markets and uh let's see here we've got all kinds of ideas and things happening uh the u.s exchanges so nvidia up again i mean this thing is just on a huge tear since the beginning actually late last year november and um beautiful looking chart i you know at some point uh now if you like nvidia we are at a nice bounce point here's the, let's just talk about this a minute because these charts do work and the indicators work great for stocks as well um, and I'm glad we hit on this because the last time that we saw an ERI TSI turning higher was back here in November of, sorry, January of 2023. Uh, and then previous to that was this November back in October. So you want to pay attention to this, you guys. Um, these indicators work very well on stocks and other mm, financial markets, Forex as well. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube replays, this, of course, are our custom indicators called Crypto Mastery. Uh, you can find out more about these at CryptoMastery.online. Uh, we have the .org here in, in play here at some point. But uh, if you go there, CryptoMastery.online, it'll redirect you and you can find out more about these uh, indicators we use to time these markets and time market tops and bottoms and uh, are the basis of a lot of our other trainings and courses catching market bottoms here catching market tops avoiding 50 percent drops catching 500 percent gains and you can see how these when these two things align highly correlative on the markets so here again pointing out that we're seeing that on the uh, stock market so uh this here i've got the eri i'm gonna come to zoom in on this a bit because what i'm seeing here is very interesting and uh, so we have an eri here and if you don't have the trade checklist, I'll tell you how to get that also. But you see the, these two things here. Pay attention. This, Despite all this other FUD in Michael Burry, uh, Michael Burry I, is wrong in, in this point in time. Because, and I can say that because these indicators have been, have not let us down. And um, so let me take a look. Now, here's the caveat. Uh, now, Michael Burry has a longer time frame. I hesitated to say wrong. I, in the current time frame, I think we get a bounce, but uh, we are overbought on the weekly trend strength indicator. And so that is the big difference here where we want to see these align is on the weekly basis. So I'm going to, I'm going to walk that back a little bit that Michael Burry is wrong. I think he's getting in early for the short uh, in the short term, but go back to a daily. I think we see a bounce here, but that's why we want to pay attention to these different time frames. And then on the next cycle up here, then I think uh, on this TSI, I think we'll see a deeper pullback because why? We have this, uh, the weekly 
overbought and uh while it's still bullish on this eri let me just turn that on again uh yeah it's, it was bullish back here on the weekly had this nice run up but now we're overbought here on this weekly can it push higher a bit certainly but we're uh, we want to keep pay attention to that and the signal line is still over is turning red on that weekly so if we look at a daily basis you know again i think this tsi the signal line could turn higher push up for maybe a week or so on nvidia and uh and then we'll see what happens on that trend indicator. But mostly green on the radar. If we jump over to a monthly time frame, by the way, uh, these uh, on Bitcoin have been very helpful calling the market bottoms on each of the market cycle lows in the last few years, since the beginning of Bitcoin, rather. And if we go out on a monthly basis of NVIDIA, the longer time frames really are excellent, especially with this early reversal indicator that we've created and when it coincides with the TSI trend strict indicator confirming. So where we had that? Right back here, February of 2013, started this major bull run back in 2019. Here we see that on the monthly time frame. caught this and just for some context here, that was a thousand percent at 10X on the NVIDIA. So what is, you know, if we caught it back here and you, know, you can set alerts on these, that was a 250, uh, percent or a 25 2.5 x uh on that um on that move there so that's uh that's great so what can we do we can do uh we can do this put an alert on the eri chart on a monthly and um yeah so basically the condition would be that and i think they've changed the alerts a little bit here or maybe this is on stocks only because usually i like to do is here crossing up uh the eri crossing up the 20 line and i'm sorry the tsi is what i would want to do there the eri is a little different all right sorry about that and this is what i was trying to uh, do there i'll put an alert on this tsi crossing up the 20 line so i'll want to know that next time that happens okay so if we jump back uh, over to uh, a daily chart now i don't spend too much time on nvidia but uh we can certainly look at the qqqs and see what's going on there and in the past month because as ks was saying can we correlate that uh to the uh the big short and <laughs> the big short of the year this year and uh what michael burry is saying let's see the exchanges here i'm not seeing where are the cues and here it's kind of hidden i don't usually pull up stocks here so um let's just do this here i thought it would be in the percent losers we'll just come up here and we'll put in the uh, QQQ on all exchanges. And um, let's see, then that's like Ultra Pro, Ultra Pro short and long. This is a good surrogate. Yeah, I mean, so that's interesting. Q, uh, KS points out that, you know, we had this big drawdown last month. Michael Burry could have done that short in July and it could be covering right now. So um, we just don't know. And that was one of the tweets that I had put out uh, in our group here, which I'll zoom in on because just to show you this, oops, uh, that's the wrong, uh, you'll have to open up Zoom, you guys, sorry about that. Anyway, um, we'll see if we can find it. Basically, some of the commentators have said that the same thing, maybe he's covered by now. Well, let's do this. Let's jump back over into our, uh, our hot list here on Bitcoin. We'll take a look at some of this. The other news here, of course. So, um, and this is another article on the SEC setting deadlines for Bitcoin ETFs, probably early 2024. So, you know, that's another signal that crypto likely to shoot higher in early 2024 going into the halving in April. You know, certainly a catalyst like BlackRock getting approved for spot BTF could be the big news to push things higher so you can certainly look at that online and um let's see did blackrock just endorse crypto this is a little bit older video i believe so you know and there's a number of other players in there like the winklevoss twins the winkleby uh, also trying to get into the game so uh anyway um let's see we have first mover asia talking about so bitcoin staying below 30k as spf goes to jail spf in jail is uh, not new news he's been in and out but um his uh, bail was revoked as it should be and um you know uh, not a whole lot to unpack here talking about bitcoin below 30k so we're in a very narrow range um not to get in down the rabbit hole by the way but um if we are going to look at some other indicators here there's the order blocks 
uh, it's a very narrow range. Like and I've been looking on, if you guys are familiar with high block, it shows these bigger, these bigger positions. So there's a lot of sell orders and long liquidations in this range. And, uh, and, and, and so, uh, or short liquidations rather. And then down here below, there's a bunch of long liquidations. So there's this range forming here where, uh, you know, the, it makes sense to keep these prices between these, uh, levels here. And basically, you know, the market makers moving price up and down to fill liquidity in these areas. So we're kind of watching both of those. And, uh, I want to change the color on that. There's some sell pressure up above here. If you look at the order blocks on something like high block. So, you know, this is, um, low volume as we want to pay attention to down here. And again, not much happening here this summer. I think this improves when the big traders on wall street come back from their big houses in the Hamptons, when they run out of champagne and their hangovers, hangovers have worn off, they come back to work in September on wall street and, uh, the big money comes back. All right, some news here. Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF goes live. I did not uh, see that, so but it doesn't seem to be moving the markets, right? So who cares? Jacoby Asset Management. So not a very big one I manage. I imagine what are their assets under management here? Are they moving the markets? Doesn't really say. And it's a bit of nothing news. Okay, so, you know, show me the charts. Tell you the news. I've been saying that for a long time. Lately, other people have been saying that, but I didn't invent that, of course. But um, at any rate, um, let's see. Rich Dad, uh, he's uh, he's sort of yeah. I can't really listen to that guy. Uh, this is interesting. Twenty five percent of Gemini's Bitcoin withdrawn. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, prominent uh, account for so issued a post reading the last few months that Gemini has seen astounding 26,000 Bitcoin withdrawn from its wallets. Well, okay. Um, yeah, by the way, my friend who's brokering a deal is, is for 100,000 Bitcoin, not dollars, 100,000 Bitcoin. That's through the miners. And um, <clears throat> my friend's an interesting uh, guy. He's uh, converting an underground nuclear bunker decommissioned nuclear bunkers that he's purchased in denver and uh, arizona tearing out all the metal and um, launch machines and turning it in underground um, end of the world armageddon style bunkers uh, interesting so anyway um so this i wonder how they can prove this a 25 percent of gemini's bitcoin stash so why would that be happening i hadn't, I hadn't heard this so Maybe BlackRock bought the bitcoins and withdrew them in self custody. Okay, so that's not it's not Gemini selling their own holdings necessarily. That's the uh, on chain. So that would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, continue discussion of BlackRock ETF application. All right, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is speculation, pure speculation. If we uh, wanted to uh, call it that, and so there's not much to see there. I think. Uh, in this case, let's look at a monthly chart of Bitcoin, just kind of see where things are as kind of a bit of a messy chart here. I'll clean that up a bit, but uh, and turn on our ERI just to show you this here, because, you know, on our M3 Active Trader class, we talk about this. That's tomorrow's class. And uh, by the way, if you'd like more information about that and how to get these indicators for free, you can learn more at moonstream.io slash M3. That's a daily active access to me in signal chat updating you guys every day in signal and uh, also doing live classes like this with a little deeper dive into the markets on wednesdays at noon and uh, you can read more about all of that here so uh, that's uh, moonstream.io slash m3 it includes these indicators here and uh, that's our high one of our highest level trainings so uh at any rate um just trying to make sure i don't see any other comments or questions here and the reason I was bringing this up here was because uh, I lost my train of thought here. Oh, yeah. On the monthly time frame. Look at this, you guys. If you haven't seen this in a while, let's just look at it and see our early reversal indicator, this accidental indicator. I'd have to pull up the uh, different chart with longer data. But uh, the only four times that the ERI is triggered on the monthly time frame has been at the market cycle bottoms. And especially then when it confirmed with this trend strength indicator, I'll turn these other ones off. Oh, I just saw something interesting though, you guys. So here, ERI, TSI, that's our mantra. And ERI back here in January. So we were suggesting to go long back in this range. Uh, I did want to also mention to you that the uh, Trader Success Worksheet, uh, you can get that here. 
and um i'll put this uh we'll put the link into that in the comments below on the youtube video and uh there's a link if you guys if you don't have this already but just comment in the chat that you need this will get you the link but i believe most of you have it and of course the trade success checklist would say is the eri showing a green up arrow and in this case we do have that here we do have that there on the monthly again when we went back onto uh the daily it's a bit flat uh and it triggered a while ago but um you can see how these have on the uh, market bottoms here have been very accurate here back here there tsi there let's go back to the monthly though that's what i wanted to call your attention to and just get a barometer now we had a bearish eri back here so this is a bit of a bearish signal and uh, but the ERI and the TSI have not aligned here. Uh, if I come back into a longer time frame to get more data, so uh, all time history index, sure, we can use that and then just zoom out to show you this. And so we have some older data we can see and make sure it's on a log scale. It is so when in doubt, zoom out, but here we can see that. Back here, market cycle low, cycle low, cycle low, cycle low. So what can we gain from this? You know, we had a bearish ERI here and here after the bottoming. And uh, in this case, we just sort of went sideways for a month and then we kind of pushed higher. So will it do that? Or do you think we're going to have this kind of pullback, multi-month pullback like we saw in the last cycle from 2020, uh, 2019 rather? and uh, which did come down let's see give me that tool is not staying put for me or here went down about well went down another 50 percent well let's see you guys just to be fair we haven't looked at this yet from that bearish eri so we had the bullish eri here and markets went up about 250 percent on bitcoin and then we had the bearish eri now that i need to turn off the eri because i want to make sure i get the uh yeah so if we take it from bear with me okay from this candle there and the bearish eri it did come down another 64 percent now this was the covid crash the only time that it really got below that 50 week moving average and then it bounced hard. So I would say that was an anomaly. However, could we see something like that again? Well, let's uh, open this up a bit. I, I'm not suggesting that we will, but this is what the indicators are telling us. Now that the monthly candle has closed for July, and this is a bearish signal here, but it's it's tempered a little bit that we have, we're still holding against above the 50 month EMA and um but it's a little bit overbought so again more case for sideways action and then to push higher but uh a little bit inconclusive here again overbought on this uh tsi but i can stay in an overbought space for quite some time as we saw from 2015 throughout that bull market to the peak in 2017 so you know we st this would indicate we have more upside on this market and uh to push higher so it's not really that overbought on a monthly basis so this is good news you guys so what do you guys think all right um so that's the day it's a weekly basis here the, um, that's the monthly i'm sorry on the weekly basis let's unpack this a little bit and then we'll look for for some movers not a whole lot moving in the markets uh, i did uh, have the heat map up originally and where is that heat map here and there's not a lot of heat you guys uh, so i turned off the zero percents a lot of the market's not doing anything so we have mostly some red we've got hedera up eight nine percent we can look at this here mostly nothing happening uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, nowhere to be seen on this. Only mover to keep on your radar possibly is Hedera. Uh, I can't remember what they do. We have looked at this in previous classes. Very uh, nice looking monthly candle though. With a bullish ERI. Oh, and I forgot to mention something. We're going to go back. Uh, you know, this... Um, it doesn't really look that exciting to me. Other than it's it's uh, it's above its... 52 21 and 50 day emas it's a but uh, so this is a sell point it, it touched its upper bollinger band as we talk about the 3bb uh, i would look for a pullback on this not sure what's pumping on hadera so probably not worth chasing that um, i am going to jump back though because i i saw something i forgot to unpack for us on that bitcoin monthly chart anybody see it 
Anybody see what I see? Okay, let me open this up. Very interesting. Our trend indicator, which is our longer term oscillator down here is printing a bell. All right, let me zoom out a bit. So again, these indicators were designed for dollar cost averaging with the ERI and the TSI as your early indicators to get into the trades, whereas the signal line and the trend were going to confirm the longer term moves. So do you see this down here, the bell? We haven't seen very many of these. The bell back in October of 2017, that's that confirm confirmation the trend is strong. And uh, we push up here. Now, the ERI, hence the name, early reversal indicator would have gotten us in earlier. The trend indicators say, hey, this has got some strength to it. It's going to continue. Uh, so we saw that. And then we saw another bell here. Now, this one didn't, it did not work out. It went down. So we're 50 50. But this bell here uh, was an excellent signal right in this range, confirming that we were going higher. That went up another 435%. So again, this is uh, something we haven't looked at here recently. Uh, we have not looked at it at all on these uh, on the classes on the monthly, but look at this. So we had the ERI and TSI. That's the early signals to get in. Got us up to this range. And of course, we went up 100% since the beginning of the year, right? So right about 100%. Now, what we're seeing now is a signal. The signal line went green here, kind of gone sideways. But look at this. We have the bell on the monthly time frame. Uh, the bell is our buy signal. It's that longer term. And it means a new trend is in play. So when we are using this trend, uh, the trade checklist, by the way, and I want to give you this link, by the way, too, to sign up for our free weekly newsletters. If you haven't already, if you haven't already, that is just hit this link. And uh, Myrene, if you could give us the uh, short link on that, uh, that is just uh, where you can sign up for a, week, a free weekly newsletter that we do, which is excellent. And it's kind of an unpacking of the markets every Monday. You can uh, get signed up for that here. And uh, let's see, in terms of the, the chat, let me see if I can put that. If you guys aren't all on that already, make sure to get signed up for this. And here's that link. Uh, there's a, a short a link for this. Um, okay, so Kaya says, Hedera Link Project partnered with Fed now. Okay, we can certainly look at that. Thank you, KS. And um, HBAR, that's right. I knew that sounded familiar. HBAR rallies on Fed now edition of Hedera base drop. So it had a bit of a pump here. I wouldn't chase it. I'd, I'd look for it on a pullback. Uh, but that's the news uh, to unpack that little spike there that we saw. And uh, let's see, in terms of this getting the, but here, back to the checklist. We have ERI looking green as the TSI green and above the 20 line, yes, as a signal line gone green. And then here's that long trade as the trend indicator showing a bell. And does the trend indicator have a green midline? Now, this is kind of an art and a science here because these things tend to work best when they all align and in the time frame, what I'm suggesting here is we could be bullish on the daily, weekly. We could be bearish on the monthly. <clears throat> Pardon me, guys, and and then or and then you know and then bullish on the on the monthly again. These can have different time frame pullbacks. So I know I used monthly twice there, but what I'm seeing here, what I want to call attention to, is when the the monthly trend indicator, this red line, goes from red to green, and goes and we have a bell printing we can see some very strong movements to the upside. And that's what we are seeing right here. Okay, the key in the bell. Now, what is the, this? We're halfway through August. If we can keep that bell on the August time frame, this market's going higher. More than likely, it's going higher. We could see a nice move like this. In September, as I've been saying, so the tea leaves are starting to align. A little bit of bearish pullback on the monthly with the ERI, okay? But that could also just mean we're waiting on a cycle here to go sideways, maybe a little bit of a pullback. But I like the fact that that trend indicator is showing a bell. Any questions, you guys? Okay, and uh, let's see, checking in with the uh, the team here. I'll put this away. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, just a message to the uh, team there. So anyway, th this is encouraging and we want to keep an eye on that. Uh, Michael Burry, we'll put that in the back of our mind, but show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. And uh, right now, as of now, 
still looking favorable. Uh, you know, if if we pull back here, now there is some more things, advanced things we go into on our M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, where we're going to talk about things like the uh, CME gap and the overall tar market index indices. Don't have time to get into that today. We have looked at some news. We looked at our indicators. Uh, let's take a look at our average true range. That's another one of our proprietary indicators uh, on this weekly basis. Has been in a buy buy zone here all the way back since kind of the beginning of the year when the ATR went green, still in a buy zone, which tells me we're in bullish status, kind of lost some steam on this. And uh, in this upward trend channel, is, it really needs to hold in this range. But uh, we can also look at this on a monthly time frame, which has not gone bullish yet. So that ATR is a little bit of a lagging indicator. However, however, on the the uh, bullish or the shorter time frame on the daily, it went bullish all the way back here in June of 2023. So, you know, I, I like the fact that on the weekly, it looks still bullish. And you can also use this in the shorter time frames if we want to come down, look at the one hour, four hour. The other indicator we haven't talked about here today is that volatility index. It's also excellent to, to add on as an add on for these uh, oscillations in the market. So here's a one hour time frame, volatility constricting on the Bollinger Bands. Really, I want to look at the uh, four hour, not seeing a whole lot going on in the four hour chart. And uh, so, you know, again, quiet markets here, you guys, it's uh, not not time to be forcing trades. If we uh, zoom out on this, <clears throat> we'll take a look at this a little bit closer here. Uh, there you have it. So what I'm looking at here is the, the vol, the trend strength indicator coming down on this lower zone and but the volatility index not doing a whole lot we'll go full screen on this this is another good confirmation when it's coming out of the lower zone here the red going from red to black uh it has it's excellent in predicting these uh pushes higher so if we zoom out to this we saw that vol index catching the bottom confirming with the tsi i love this on the one hour four hour time frames and then we saw that huge push up along here then it kind of languished a bit, kind of was choppy back in this range, saw a little bit of a pump higher here. Uh, vol index kind of sideways, volatility, it's measuring volatility. And so, you know, when volatility compresses, as we know from Bollinger Bands, then it's likely to expand. And uh, we've seen that a uh, number of times here. Uh, yesterday, we saw this volatility con uh, contradiction, <laughs> constricting rather. Sorry, guys, I've been traveling. Um, had oral surgery last week. So uh, constricting here, normally it pushes higher, but in this case, it pushed down a bit. So uh, not much to see here. Not much to see here. So uh, let's see. And yeah, thank you, Myreen. So for getting that free newsletter, by the way, all you have to do to get signed up for this is uh, go over to this link, which is moonstream.io slash free weekly newsletter altogether. So uh, get on that. This is a, our team does a great job putting that together, and um, you know it's a, it's a highlight of the news. So if you like the news here, by the way, if you are watching the uh, YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps us get more uh, eyeballs and um, can help you with your trading. We do this every week live. So again, uh, free weekly newsletter. I'm looking for the chat to drop that in for you guys here, and uh, I see that here's that here's that shorter version. Uh, moonstream.io slash free weekly newsletter. Just put your name on there like that. You click sign up and you'll get signed up on that and it'll take you to another page. Okay. So uh, anything else you want to look at, you guys, that's the ATR. I'll turn that off. We could turn on our dynamic candlesticks, which is also part of the indicator package. And um, so let's see, I've got a bunch of these in here. You won't have all of these some of these are experimental. Uh, we do have a new one, by the way. Oops. The uh, the ERI Trend Pro. And uh, and the actually, it's going to make me do this. So let's do this here. The ERI Pro, I've got to turn off some indicators here. So it's because I've been on the road and I got too many things on this chart. Uh, we're going to uh, turn that off here. Actually, I can save that one here. That's Bitcoin Monthly. And we can turn this off here. That was Hedera. So we'll backtrack with this. Go back to the heat map. We don't need that right away. And uh, I'll turn off some news here. There's that There's that article, by the way, about the NSA. So you guys will read that at your on your own time. And um, 
Yeah, so what I need to do here is um, maybe turn off some indicators so I can add this other one. So we have a beta indicator. I'll just turn off something that I'm not using immediately. And uh, let me just jump in here because I've got uh, favorites. And bear with me, you guys, because I don't think you guys have seen this here yet. Uh, and um, all right, sorry about that. I need to I need to upgrade the the plan I'm on. It it renewed me and it did it monthly. And I know I said I'd upgrade it to the larger one. I just haven't had time because I've been traveling. So um, at any rate, we'll look at that next week. The ERI and Trend Pro they kind of give volume levels down below, and so. Uh, that's something that um, <clears throat> I have it on another chart. I'm not sure why it won't let me add those. <clears throat> if I turn off some of these other indicators, I guess I can probably do it. And uh, I can always add those back in. All right. So if I save it and then I uh, do a reload. Any questions, you guys? Uh, I don't see any questions or comments. So basically on this, the ERI Pro is a little different that it adds in some volume. And uh, if it's not going to let me do this, I don't know what's, what I'm going to have to do with that. But let's take a look at uh, the ERI Pro. And there it is. Okay, so and maybe the Trend Pro might let me do that too. Um, all right, so what we have here, uh, the ERI Pro is like our ERI. I'm going to drag it up to the top here. And I'm going to move this, the, the uh, what do you call it, the scaling over to the right. So we merge it all into one. That way it'll move together. Now, I know it's a lot to see here. What this says, though, is this volume, we've been seeing that we don't go back below those levels. This is a money flow kind of index. So when I say we could go lower, I don't think it comes down in this lower range. That CME gap, I don't see, think we get filled. And uh, so this is this uh, weekly basis. Let's look at a daily. And, uh, you know, this is a little bit uh, still experimental, but these basically are high volume pockets, which would indicate that uh, these are liquidity pockets we won't go down back below them that's what we're saying so with that uh, let me just turn that off for a minute we're still tweaking this and i want to look at the so the trend pro is similar and then it gives i haven't been fully trained on these to be honest so i have to get with joe on on what these are all about but um anyway we'll impact that in a future class because uh, i think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves what i what i didn't uh, do yet is i wanted to get to the uh, hash ribbon indicator also just to see what the miners are up to because uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier today the hash ribbon indicator showing that uh, yeah so we are in a, we are in a buy zone that's something that we haven't seen for a while let me turn off some of these other ones and we'll look at a higher time frame so the hash ribbon indicator is uh, basically says that this is when the miners are buying and it's a good time for us to buy. So we saw this back in here, which was back in earlier in the year. So we haven't seen the hash ribbon buy indicator on the daily basis since earlier this year. And uh, the other side of this indicator is it it, it, ha it was violated previously only once. And what it means is that when this buy indicator happens, that price will not go back below this recent dip. Now, this is where it violated. It did send a buy right here. And this zone, and of course, we had this market sell off. But if and it and it was violated here as well, where we came, we you know, this would have signaled that this previous cycle low would not have gone below. Of course, we had the FTX crash, so that's explainable. So these two hash ribbons would indicate that we don't go below these. And if we zoom out on this over time, we had seen this might be new for you guys that uh, it did hold. And uh, maybe I'll just go to a five day. I'm not sure if that's going to throw it off or not. Maybe a weekly. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So let's go weekly all the way back to the beginning of time. The hash ribbon indicator fired here, never went below. Fired here. This cycle never went below. So it was inching its way higher, higher. So do you see what I'm showing you is that this hash ribbon indicator over time, except for recently, has signaled that once it fires, it does not go below that. The prior cycle sort of dip so these here were indicating that we would not go back below this okay and then this hash ribbon would also indicate this little dip so it's it's a bit uh, fuzzy but here we never went below here we had this one here 
Now, this was the another time it failed. That was that was the that was the March 2020 COVID crash, right? Like I said. So between FTX and COVID <clears throat> and these, you know, it's a pretty good signal. You know, you see that right in here. And then back here and then here. Uh, this one was the one. Well, this failed also. <laughs> so uh, this is the weekly time frame, though. At any rate, on this weekly time frames, it would say it would suggest that this cycle low in this range is not does not go below it. Not 100%, but worth noting. Okay. Um, so that's all we have time for you guys is coming up on the hour. I think we've covered a lot of ground here. I'll go ahead and uh, turn this off. You know, similarly, though, um, when the miners are capitulating and we're going red, you know, that's when they the miners have give, started selling their Bitcoin that they've been mining and getting and dumping it. So when you see the capitulation on here in green, you want to look for the reverse, that red capitulation drop to turn to turn back up. And that's that buy signal. If you haven't used the hash ribbon indicator, there you go. So um, any questions, you guys? We, we can look at a few coins, I suppose. Let's see, but there's really nothing moving right now. So uh, as we saw before, we have Ethereum kind of holding above 21 and 50 week moving averages. So that's good. That's uh, if we put on our um, hash, you know, not the hash ribbon, the uh, Bitcoin support band, uh, that would be the bull market support bands right in there. We're holding above that. So uh, coming up into uh, the crypto mastery watch list, uh, you know, we have we had been watching compound, which broke above its 50 day kind of pulling back in a bit. Let's turn on our indicators, see what they show us getting a bit of a bearish ERI. So that's to the downside on that. Turn these back on. What are we looking for? We're looking for an ERI TSI and then the signal line to match. So just to skim through these bearish on Ethereum, bearish on Solana. Now, I did draw this last week, a break above that and a retest. We did not get above the 50-week moving average. So, you know, it's come back to the 21-week. Again, there's not much going on, you guys. It's just this market's pretty quiet. And uh, we just want to wait and see, uh, you know. So not nothing to see there on the news. We've got uh, Polygon, XRP. XRP is, is, you know, looking more bullish than not. It did come back up, push this level and is coming back and retesting. So it's in a new bullish upward trend channel. If we wanted to draw that, we could do that. Uh, but it's still forming. So this, you want to be very careful with that and stick with the indicators. Nothing uh, bullish about that right now. We see Filecoin heading lower. We see... So these are just some we had on our watch list. You know, certainly we could jump over to a different watch list and see what's moving, but there's not a lot moving. And I don't know that it makes sense to really dive into this any further, to be honest. I'll go to my uh, watch list here just to skim through some of these. You know, the VIX is up, doesn't say much. We've got just mostly red, but mostly nothing, nothing happening. SRM down 30%. I hate to see that. That was uh, one I had hopes for, but thank you, Sam, for uh, annihilating SRM down 30%. Uh, I don't know if that will come back here. It's just all the way down here in these lower levels. But, you know, look, this is a, a lottery that is kind of competing with DYDX. It's a derivatives-based exchange. This one's going to be built on the Solana blockchain. So some problems there. And this might be Sam selling his shares to pay his legal fees because Sam is behind bars. Uh, and that's uh, probably likely. But you guys, I don't want to look for stuff that isn't there. We we no need to go into the hot list and strong sells and strong buys. Uh, this is one of those nothing to see here moments. Uh, even the total market cap is just holding above a trillion dollars. That's what we want to see happen. But uh, just lukewarm sideways action, really nothing to uh, garner from looking at this. We don't have any clues. We will we'll remain patient and uh, see what comes about. Let the trades come to us. And uh, so. Anyway, um, that's all we have time for you guys. You guys are quiet. I think that's uh, right up on the hour. Again, if you're watching this and you want to get access to these indicators, you, all you have to do is go over to cryptomastery.online. You can read about them, get started for as little as $97 and you can get a free month. Or if you'd like to join our advanced training 
that meets weekly and has uh, daily commentary and updates and includes so indicators for free that just go to moonstream.io slash M3. Great time to be positioning in front of these markets here. And we're going to see some fireworks here in September, I believe. You can read all about that and some customer feedback on this page as well. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a great week. And those of you in the M3, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. And of course, the Retire Rich class on Thursday. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good week.